It was a bright and sunny day. On January 27, 1999, 14 years ago tomorrow, St. Louis was excited to have a very special man in its midst, and so were Stan and Lil. As they progressed through a number of security checkpoints along Linda Boulevard, they finally came to the residence of the Archbishop just right down the street. For it was there that one retired cardinal was going to greet another former cardinal. They first met in Krakow, Poland, many years before when Blessed John Paul was Cardinal Karol Wojtyla. As Stan exited his car with Lil, cheers and applause erupted from the people who were waiting to get a look at the Pope. They were standing across the street. But the cheers rang out not because the Pope was looking out the window, but rather because it was their friend and hero. They wanted to welcome as he traveled to greet the Holy Father. And it was obvious of that special connection that existed between Stan the Man and the people of St. Louis and the rest of the country. And you know, to see Stan, I think he thought all those people across the street were for him. And they probably were in one way or another. During that visit to St. Louis, the Holy Father, John Paul, was given a hockey stick that was autographed by team members of the St. Louis Blues. At some point, I questioned the Holy Father as to whether he was to be a hockey player. And the Holy Father's simple reply to me came in his Polish-accented English, baseball. No doubt he was influenced by Stan, the man, his friend. There have been numerous movies about baseball players throughout time. William Bendix played Babe Ruth. Ronald Reagan played Grover Cleveland Alexander. Dan Daly played the beloved Dizzy Dean. And Gary Cooper played Lou Gehrig. These movies were a blend of fact and fiction, many times more fiction. And unless you're a classic movie buff like myself, as I confess to be, these movies have faded probably with history. But not Stan the Man, who retired from baseball almost 50 years ago this year. For Stan and Lil and their journey just continued on. I don't know if there will ever be a movie made about Stanley Frank Musial, but to me that's really not so bad. I do hope, however, that perhaps a new local bridge may carry his name. Don't you agree? Now, if there are any politicians here, I hope you heard that. But what I do know that since the early 1940s, the good people of St. Louis have witnessed a remarkable story about an individual who was blessed by great skill, but also with a good dose of humility. The skill was God-given. The humility was Stan. Perhaps that gift of humility, maybe perhaps, was because of his dear and beloved wife, Lil Musial, who was called, to home, was called home to God just last May. At her funeral, I commented that Stan was never thrown out of a baseball game. Now, some may think it was because of his kind disposition, but I think somewhere deep down, it because he just didn't want to go home and tell Lil he got thrown out of a game. Many see the life of Stan the Musial in terms of baseball statistics. After all, he was a superstar. As I said, this year marks 50 years since he retired from playing the game, and 50 years is a long time. And yet I would venture to bet that there aren't too many people in this community and across this country that do not know about Stan the man. 
And this is true of young and old. One does not even have to add the title of the man. In St. Louis, all you could say is Stan, and they all know what you're talking about. Now, Stan the man, the baseball player, had an incredible gift to play. We all know that. 3,630 hits. 1,815 at home. 1,018, 15, 1,815 on the road. Talk about consistency. Lifetime batting average, 331. 1,951 RBIs. 22 years played the game. 475 home runs. Three most valuable player awards. Seven batting titles. And I don't know if you know this, but in 1948, he missed the Triple Crown by one home run. Musial and Biggies. If you're from St. Louis, you know that was. Just a few years ago, he received the Presidential Medal of Freedom, the highest honor our nation can give a civilian. But you know, Stan was just more than statistics. He was the loving husband of a wonderful woman who walked by his side, took care of his children when he was away, and they were married almost 72 years. Father of four children, Richard, Janet, Jeannie, and Jerry. Grandfather of 11. Great-grandfather of 12. He was a brother, and he was a son, but he was a friend to thousands and thousands of people, not only in this community, not only in the United States, but throughout the world. And of course, he was a dear friend to number two, Red Shandies. And he was also a great man of faith. I heard his story that one day someone saw Stan coming in on a Sunday morning early, and they questioned him, questioned him whether or not he was out all night. He said, no, I'm coming back from Mass. I was blessed to serve as pastor of the Church of the Annunciata, Stan and Lil's Parish, for the four years before I was named the Bishop of Knoxville, Tennessee. Sunday after Sunday, I would see Stan and Lil at that 11 o'clock Mass, sitting in the front pew by the shrine of St. Joseph, just faithful members of the parish for over 40 years. You know, there was a tradition at Annunciata that following Mass, Stan, especially in later years, would, would push the wheelchair of Lil to his car. People, young and old, would line up outside the doors of the church to assist Stan in putting that wheelchair into the trunk of his car. Now, I am sure that this was done because the, period, the people had a spirit of generosity and concern and care. But you know, once that trunk was open, Stan would dish out souvenir after souvenir. <laughs> I have three or four myself. Today, as we celebrate this Mass of Christian burial, the readings of the Mass remind us of God's goodness and his invitation to share that goodness with others. These readings, the same that were proclaimed just recently at Lil's funeral, are a challenge to all of us to look soberly at our life and to ascertain how well we live our faith and respond to God's challenge to live, that li to live our lives in making a difference in the world in which we live. Can't you just picture Stan when you heard the gospel? Blessed are the poor in spirit. Blessed are the lowly. Blessed are those who hunger for holiness. Blessed are those who show mercy, and especially in Stan's case, to pitchers. Blessed are the peacemakers. And perhaps, if the Lord doesn't mind, I might add a few more. Blessed are those who are kind and offer a friendly smile to all that we might meet. 
Blessed are those who take time out of a busy life or a busy day to share with others. And in case for Stan, to sign autographs forever. Blessed are those who use their talents to the fullest and are always grateful for those gifts, for they know they come from God. Blessed are those who play music, in parentheses, harmonicas, and bring joy to others. Blessed are those who serve the community in which they live, love their families, and treasure their friendships. Be glad and rejoice, for their reward in heaven is great. With a twinkle in his eye, with the sounds of his harmonica, and always with his kind smile, Stan truly lived out his life with faith. He was grateful for what he was blessed with and had a strong desire to share his gifts with others, and thank God he did. You know, God, our most loving Father, invites all of us to a special relationship with him. We all know that God has blessed us all with life that is filled with many gifts and talents. He has blessed us with family and friends. He has blessed us with acts of kindness and a joy-filled heart. And he waits, and he watches, and he listens to see what we do with our life. Stan, as we know throughout his life, those 92 plus years, lived life to its fullest, always grateful to God. I just read the other day that Cardinal baseball will never be the same. We will no longer see Stan on opening day as he rides with the field with Brian, demonstrating his love for St. Louis and for baseball. Never again will we witness his joy as he travels on a field of green. Never again in person will we see that musical smile or hear that tune on his harmonica. But in those moments of sadness, all we need do is travel to the St. Louis Field of Dreams, known as Bush Stadium, and to gaze on that number six in that Hall of Fame area and to remember the man as he, as he was once tagged with in Brooklyn, a title that he carried for the rest of his life. It is easy, at least for me, and I think for all of us, to understand why Commissioner Ford Frick stated at Stan's retirement, here stands baseball's perfect warrior. Here stands baseball's perfect knight. A few years ago, another great Cardinal hitter began to acquire from others the title of El Hombre, the man. I truly was edified to see that Albert Pujols vehemently rejected that title, stating that there was only one man, the man. And he also did this in Los Angeles, such as of his respect for Stan, the man. There was great affection between these two great hitters of Cardinal history, even to the point of Stan stating that whenever Albert would see him, he would approach and give him a kiss right on the forehead. I would think Stan liked that. You know, many believe that St. Louis is a special place for baseball. I tell the people in Knoxville that all the time. Some even call it baseball heaven. Since 1941, Stan has called St. Louis home. And you know, I think that Stan enjoyed being Stan. He enjoyed the people. He enjoyed the sacred trust that existed between a fan and a baseball player and a team. And he enjoyed the people that appreciated a game, which he often said gave him great opportunities. He told me once in a conversation that early in his career he met Babe Ruth. And Babe Ruth told him that he thought Stan would be a pretty decent player. I, won't, I wonder what the conversation in heaven is like today. 
have a Budweiser. And so to you, the Musial family, who graciously shared your parents, Lil and Stan with the Cardinal Nation, I know that I can speak for so many when we pray that as the man has left this baseball heaven, he now shares with Lil a place in the kingdom of heaven. We pray that he may have heard the words of our dear and loving Savior. Welcome, Stan. Welcome, good and faithful servant. Welcome to the place prepared for you from the foundation of the world. Eternal rest, grant unto this our friend, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon him. May his soul and all the souls of the faithful departed through the mercy of God now rest in peace. Dear Stan, our friend, rest in peace.